air, but knowing the answer very quickly or knowing the risk of something, having the most key. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hello, welcome everybody. I didn't expect to this many people at this talk, so I'm very happy to see you all here. Um, my talk is on MQP, not quite Perl, it's a light bulb version of Perl 6, and I'm Patrick. As uh, so I go through the talk, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and ask questions, as opposed to trying to wait for the end. Um, not quite Perl is a project that I started about uh, two and a half years ago years ago to, uh, to try and improve the way that we were doing the pair of competitor tools. So to give a little uh, background here, um, but first of all, I'm the lead developer for uh, Recruiter with Perl 6, and I also developed the pair of gram range and the pair of compiler toolkit, which is what led to uh, Perl. And I also have to acknowledge the people who paid me some amount of money to work on some of this. So uh, thank you to them. So what is not quite Perl? It's intended to be a very lightweight version of Perl 6. And the reason why I created it was to um, be able to write code for the virtual machine, in this particular case, the Parrot virtual machine, uh, using some syntax other than here. I wanted to be able to use the Perl 6 syntax. And the key thing that makes not quite Perl, the not quite part, is that this is what you would get if you had a virtual machine and could program it in Perl 6 syntax, but you didn't have a runtime library. So uh, you don't use any, you don't get any runtime library beyond what the virtual machine already gives you. Now, in the case of Parrot, that's fairly rich because Parrot has arrays, it has methods, it has a lot of the other things that you would like to be able to use. And so I said I don't want to layer any more capabilities on top of Parrot in terms of its runtime. I just want to have a syntax for being able to access those capabilities that looks like Perl six. Um, so the timeline for the pieces that led up to NQP uh, are, include the parser grammar engine, which was done in 2005. The, uh, in 2006, we got a more robust version of the grammar engine and the early versions of what was known as the tree grammar engine for doing tree transformations. That didn't work out, so in 2007, we abandoned that and uh, came up with the, the early forms of uh, not quite Perl and the Parrot Compiler Toolkit which led to what is the current implementation of Recruto Perl 6. And uh, Recruto Perl 6 in 2008 was largely developed with those components, PGP, AQP, and PCT. Um, and last year, we found uh, some limitations with PGE. The specification for Perl 6 regular expressions had evolved from what I had started with in 2005 with the grammar engine. And I was looking at trying to fix the grammar engine to incorporate all of these new specifications and I realized it was much easier to just simply start over. And as part of starting over, I just redeveloped the grammar engine and I wrote, rewrote the grammar engine as MQP instead of in peer, which it had been previously, and then made it all self-hosting so that the parser for MQP uh, knows how to parse itself. And then uh, in 2010, we basically started from scratch with Recruto again and redeveloped it based on this, uh, this version of MQP called MQP RX. The RX means and regexes. So unlike earlier versions of NQP, um, it, uh, the early versions just did some transformations. The new ones include the regex engine as part of it. And we'll see some of the pieces as I go through this talk. So if you want to know what NQP looks like, if it does its job, it should look a lot like Perl 6. And so here's a simple NQP program. Uh, there's a shebang line to say what it is that we're using. And then we'll say my dollar sign name declares a scalar, and we give it a value of just another Perl hacker. Um, I'm calling a sub named hello, which I will define directly below it. Now, the first thing that you should note if you're looking at this is you say, what is that colon doing there? Uh, how many of you have seen Damien Conway's talk on dead languages? He always says that any language that uses a colon for assignment is a dead language. It's doomed. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I already know NQP is doomed at the outset. Um, the reason for the colon here is because th that's still valid Perl 6. In Perl 6, the colon equals means binding as opposed to assignment. So instead of making a copy of something, we actually bind the symbol to the value. And in NQP, all that we have is binding. We just do binding. There are a number of reasons for this choice that have to do with compiler theory and immutability and, and things like that. Um, but in NQP, our basic operation for taking a symbol and uh, associating it with value is a binding operation. Uh, that's, of course, just a very simple program. 
a more complex one. So they may first question. Yes. So the uh, last column name should that be dollar x? It should be dollar x. There is a typo there. I decided I didn't want to do it a fourth time in peer. 
I wanted something that could have some lifelong longevity. So in July 2009, I decided that the way to do that would be to add regex to state P. Uh, started that process in uh, 2009, started AQPRX, and in late October 2009, had AQPRX written using NQPRX, and we'll show some of that here in a little bit. Uh, but that's, that's really nice, because now it can start to target other backends besides Parrot, and the code is much more readable when it's written in a Perl 6, six syntax than it was in, uh, in Peer. Uh, just to give you a, uh, an example of what some of that looks like, <coughs> We'll look at the source. Uh, let's look at the let's look at the entry source. Oops. So here is the NQP source, and it's this is for the parser, and it's just Perl six. So uh, we can go through and look at the these are the different tokens. Uh, let's go through and say that's what locks look like. Um, Let's see here. Here's, here's an if statement. That's what an if statement looks like. So an if statement consists of the sim matches an if, followed by some white space, uh, followed by an x block, the keyword else if, uh, um, zero or more of these, and uh, the keyword else followed by some uh, additional blocks. That's taken straight out of the Perl 6 grammar, pretty much. And the same thing for unless and a variety of different things. So it's just Perl 6 code. And the other part of NQPRX is what we call the action methods. And again, I'm not going to go through the details, but it's just more Perl 6 code. And that implements the bulk of NQP itself. A similar thing is true for the grammar, uh, the regex, the regex. The regex is sort of have a, their own parsing grammar and their own set of actions. Um, so that's kind we had a number of different compiler tools. If you've seen my talks at previous conferences uh, anywhere, then you know that I did uh, uh, talks about where we would build compilers using PGD, the compiler toolkit, a variety of different things. Uh, so if you were going to write a parent compiler using these tools prior to the current version of NQP, then you had to know about PGD, the parser, and how to write code for it. And then you could write your action engines in the old version, your action methods in the old version of NQP. You could, you would then write a compiler object, and that had to be done in peer to be able to tie all the pieces together. And your high-level language libraries were typically peer and sometimes a little bit of NQP. What we've been able to achieve in the new version of NQP is that now everything is NQP, except sometimes you want some peer uh, for the high-level libraries that you write for efficiency or, or to be able to get at features that NQP doesn't let you get. So the big advantage of the new system is that you can write an entire compiler with just a single tool. And we'll demonstrate that now. So here's an example compiler. This is a compiler for addition and subtraction expression. So a uh, compiler in the uh, NQP world has two parts, but it has more than two parts. But the two parts that the compiler author has to focus on are the grammar and the transformations. So we'll start with the grammar. So a grammar here, I'm defining a new grammar for a language that I'll call ABC. It stands for a basic calculator. <laughs> and, uh, there's a rule here for an expression, and an expression in my language is going to be an integer followed by some sort of an add operation followed by another integer. Uh, an add operation is either a plus or a minus, and an integer is going to be just a sequence of digits. The place where you start is that we'll start with top, and for my programs in my, this language will consist of a single expression. Okay, so far, any questions? That's really straightforward, right? So what we need is a way to be able to take this grammar, which NQP knows how to compile and build a parser from, and transform it into executable code. So here's the expression. So the expression consists of an integer, an add operation, another integer. And every rule that exists in the grammar can have a corresponding